Okay, let's talk about using this crazy thing called a rivet squeezer or dimpler, depending on which way you look at it. The tool itself comes with a whole bunch of different tips that you can selectively choose. And you can see here we've got ones that are specifically designed for dimpling and then for universal head rivets. So dimpling, rivet heads, or uh, universals in the different sizes of uh, rivet size. And then we've got these tools here which act as our bucking bar or as our flush set. The big thing is it's all about setting height. Okay, and so what we're gonna do is when we set up the rivet squeezer for squeezing rivets, what we need to do is we need to make sure that when the two, the two parts of the uh, squeezer come together, there's a stop. We need to make sure that that stop, when we put our little rivet sets in, top and bottom, we have to have a gap in between there. And it has to be exact, because it's gonna squeeze the head, and when it hits its full extension, it should properly set our bucktail. So we may have to adjust that. And how we adjust that pretty simple and straightforward. Some of them you can actually dial in the, the height difference, but what we're gonna use is washers. Either thick washers or thin washers to micro adjust that space in between the two ends of the arms when they come together to create our final squeezed rivet. If we're actually dimpling, which I'm gonna show you as well, what we want is we want those two pieces to fully come together solidly because they have to create enough power to actually bend our piece of metal, okay? And so when we dimple, we set zero gap with the dimpling dies in there. And I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to get my piece of metal. And you can see here I've drilled all my holes. It's two thin pieces of material. So there's no way I can countersink those. I've got to dimple those. So what I'm going to do is get my Clico pliers and I'm going to take my Clicos out. Okay. And there's my two sheets of metal. And so what I got to do is I'm going to dimple three of these and we'll put some countersink rivets in there and then we'll leave three for the universal heads. So what I got to do is I got to set my squeezing tool up using my 1 8 dimpling dies. So I pull my two 1 8 dimpling dies out and what I want to do is I want to make sure that we get full contact when these come together I want them to fully bottom on each other because I'm going to be squeezing my piece of metal right to, to form the dimple. So what I'm going to do, these have already got some extra washers on them and am I going to have any luck getting them off? Nope, I'm not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out my riveting tips here, take them out of the machine, and then what I'm going to do is I always put the portion that has the pilot on the bottom, because then what I can do is I can slide my piece of metal over it, and I don't have to worry about moving the piece of metal up and down while the arm, the upper arm, is going up and down. I'm going to put the, I guess the female portion, on the top, okay? And now I'm pretty much ready to go. So the first thing I want to check is that the two parts fully come together. Yeah, there is no gap there. And so that's a good fit. So it's ready for countersinking. Now another important thing that we want to keep in mind is we want to make sure that we know which is the top surface and which is the bottom surface because I want to always make sure that my dimples are going the right way. I'm going to double dimple this, so a dimple on the top skin and a dimple on the bottom skin. I can only do this one skin at a time. So what I'm going to do is take my skin, here's my top. So the top I'm going to put down, drop it into the pilot like that, and now it's ready for squeezing. I push down on the pedal, let it do its thing, and look at that. Beautiful, nicely finished hole. I'm gonna make sure I know which way, yeah, that fits perfect. I'm gonna do my bottom sheet just so I know this is the top, so I'm gonna to have to bring it upside down. Okay, and squeeze it. 
perfect and one fits perfectly inside the other. So I'm going to do the other three real quick here. Okay. One, two, three, and then I'm going to do the same thing on this guy. One, two, and three. Okay, so now I've got I've got dimpled skins both sides, and the one fits beautifully into the other. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my clecos back in, lock everything in position. This, okay, like that, and like that. Okay, there's my clecos red. My holes are all perfectly lined up, and now I'm ready to put some rivets in. Okay, we're ready to do some riveting. So I'm going to put in my universals first. So here is my female set and my, in essence, my bucking bar. So again, I'm going to put my, my the, the head holding portion in the bottom so I don't have to be moving my material up and down as I'm squeezing. I'm going to put this base in here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a, an initial squeeze. Holy, look at the gap in there. That's huge. That's too much. So I'm going to put a slightly longer bucking bar in there, in essence. So one of the other little snaps. Pop that puppy in there. Okay. Squeeze it again. Oh, that's looking closer. That's looking pretty close to the size, maybe, when I put my rivet in, that it'll squeeze it and it'll work properly. Okay, so I'm going to put my the head of my rivet on the top side. And so there's... There's my one and a half D sticking out. I calculated it based on the length of the rivet being material thickness plus one and a half D sticking out. Whatever that numerical value came out to, I multiplied it by 16 and when I punched it in, it gave me a dash four as being the correct size. So that's the size I've chosen. Okay, the head is fully seated and we're ready to rivet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to place the head, I don't know if you guys can see that, Place the head nice and tight against the, uh, the rivet set there, and then I'm going to give it a squeeze, bring it down slow. Make sure everything's nice and square. Hold this to keep it nice and straight, and then squeeze it. Well, right away I can tell, hmm, that looks a little on the tall side to me. So what I'm going to do is get my gauge. I'm going to find my four. There it is right there. I'm going to put that down, and whoa, bang, bang. It's way too tall. So what I'm going to do is I want to squeeze it a little more, I'm going to put in a shim. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a thick washer on top. And in fact, yeah, we'll start with one thick washer. I'm going to put that as a shim in there and I'm going to re-squeeze it. I can re-squeeze it a couple of times because it's not a, it's a single process. It's not like hammering it. So if I can do this a couple of times, it's still not going to end up too brittle. So bring it down. Oh, wow, that's looking way better. Let's get the gauge. And there's my number four. Oh, look at that. Perfect rivet. And when I look at the head, look at that. Beautiful. Perfect finish. And so once, once that thing is set up, I am good to go with all of my 1 8 rivets. And I don't have to do any more adjustment. Drop it in the hole. Set it so I'm looking at the bucktail. Get that positioned. Look at that. Another beautiful, perfect rivet. Look at that. Okay, so let's do the last one. Okay. I'm going to put it, there it is, in the squeezer. Keep your fingers out of there. You never want to get your fingers in there. And yet again, another perfect rivet. And look at those heads. The heads are spotless. Okay, so now let's put some countersinks in there. So a countersink would have a flush snap and a bucking bar, right? Well, this is a 1 8 snap, so that's no good. I got to change it out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find a uh, flush snap, one of these guys, that's about the same height. This looks ever so slightly taller. So, eh, you know what, let's give it a try. I'm going to see how that makes out. So again, a 4-4, because I calculated the length. I'm going to put it into my countersunk hole. And again, always best, put my finger on it, 
put the head manufacturer's head on the bottom so you don't have to move anything get it positioned bring the squeezer down slowly you can do that with your foot nice and slow and easy bring it down make sure it's centered and then give it a squeeze oh, wow now this is a this is a um, dimpled hole I can't put the four against the skin because the skin's been lifted up in order to create the dimple. So this is when I'm going to use my one and a half D to give me an idea as to whether or not the bucktail is, is perfect. And that look at that, it's just a tiny bit more than one and a half D. So that's a good bucktail. See, it looks super nice. And look at that head, perfectly flat. Nice finish. And that's the beauty of using the squeezer is you get that perfect and consistent finish as long as the skin remains the same thickness. If we change the skin thickness, then we've got to change the uh, setting on the squeezer so that we have that proper gap between the two parts. Okay, last one. Look at that. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Oh my gosh, fabulous finish. And so that's the joy of using the squeezer. We can use it as a dimpler, full contact between the two skins, or we can use it as a riveting tool. We have to set the gap between the two parts so that when the bucktail is set, it's at the perfect height. Okay, so there it is, using the squeezer. And we're gonna use that for some of our rivets on the P2 project. So somebody's going to have to set it up right and then everyone else is going to be happy because hopefully they set it up perfect and it's going to give us perfect rivets. Okay, there you go, squeezer.